Hi, greetings. It's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, and I am pleased to have you in class. So today I want to talk about chapter one, the introduction chapter from uh, the leadership textbook that comes with this course. Um, it's a, as you're, you're finding out, not only is it a little expensive, but it really is the best textbook out there on leadership theory. And I don't want theory to be so theoretical, but I do want everybody to have a powerful learning experience and really understand some of the nuances of each of these chapters. I've been teaching out of this textbook for going on 17 years, believe it or not. And it's the same textbook that I went through as a, uh, as a, a graduate student. And quite frankly, I love the material. I really connect with the examples that Dr. Nordhaus shares with us. And I hope you love the textbook as much as uh, I have planned for you. And so, like anything, if it's worth doing, it really is worth doing well. Uh, in this first chapter, uh, Dr. Nordhaus talks about a lot about uh, where leadership theory came from and how it evolved. Uh, the, the very first chapter kind of goes into trait theories and then as the, the book goes through you start to see leadership as more of a process oriented philosophy. Um, there is a philosophy called uh, assigned leadership versus emergent leadership. You know, leaders are leaders because that is their title. But sometimes people naturally emerge into being a leader because their skill sets uh, are a good uh, resource. Um, the, as we uh, as we'll talk about in this first chapter, you know, there's a big section about power, and we we all get power in many different ways. And maybe you've studied that in a different class. But the more power that a leader has, the more influence to be able to make change there really is. So understanding where we get power is really important. And that comes from a study that we dated way back to the 1950s. Um, very often, leaders fall into the paradigm of using coercion, you know, do this or else, in order to get things done. And that really does get quick results, but ultimately it, it's one of the least effective ways to, to be a leader because you ruin the levels of trust. Uh, finally, in this uh, chapter, we, we talk a little bit about the differences uh, between leadership and management. And John Cotter was considered uh, one of the most brilliant leadership uh, philosophers out there, a Harvard professor, and he's absolutely brilliant. He made a lot of contributions to the world of leadership. Uh, you'll notice that in this first chapter they talk about the evolution of leadership and some of the definitions that kind of emerge. In the early 1900, it was really all about control and centralization of power. In the 1930s, uh, a lot of theories uh, were being investigated on traits. You know, what, what are the most effective traits that leaders have? Are leaders born or made? Uh, then, in the 1940s, we really started exploring the, the group approach to leadership. And in the 1950s, we took it to the next level and looked at group theory, shared goals, and then levels of effectiveness, you know. Uh, and, and finally, in the 1960s and 70s, we started talking about leadership uh, behavior and organizational behavior as a whole. So, lots of amazing um, things happen in the in the 20th century as far as us understanding coming to a better realization of what it takes to be an effective leader and what the heck is leadership as a whole you can get a master's degree or a, a doctorate in leadership if you want because there's such an expansive body of literature out there on leadership um, leadership really in the 1980s evolved into really looking into a transformation and traits. I can remember uh, when Bill Clinton was in office, we talked a lot about transformational uh, leadership. Um, the nation needed change uh, and, and so, so did a lot of organizations at that time. So um, lots of studies took place as it relates to um, to leadership. Here in the 21st century, I'm excited that uh, Bill George comes out with uh, authentic leadership. 
and then we talk about uh, spiritual leadership and um, Greenleaf servant leadership and then adaptive leadership. So there, even to this very day, there are new models of leadership that we could learn from and learn to apply. And that's what I think is really exciting about studying leadership is uh, the most successful teams and organizations have, have uh, people in management positions who really understand how to be an effective leader. And so this is why we're excited to offer you this, this leadership class. Let's talk about some concepts related to leadership. You know, leadership is really about gaining group focuses and looking at processes. Uh, you can take it from a personality perspective. There's some personalities that push people away and some types of, of, of personalities that attract people. You know, it's we need to be looking at the behaviors and actions of effective leaders. We need to recognize the power relationship between leaders and followers and really be looking at leaders as they create positive change and what are those uh, transformational processes. And so leadership is seen as an art and a science because there really are defined skills that if you apply over and over again, you get better results. So what is leadership? Um, Nordhaus defines leadership as a process whereby an individual influences a group of individuals to achieve a common goal. I mean, if you think about um, when you're working with larger groups especially, it really does take one person to bring people together, point them in the right direction, and give them what they need in order to be successful. And what about the phenomena between leadership and leaders? You know, leadership is a process, and leaders and followers are involved together. Uh, it, it really is about, leadership is about influence. And leaders and followers really need each other. You can't be a leader without being, without having followers. Um, leadership re is um, needs a common goal, and very often leaders initiate and maintain relationships with people, which is really key. You gotta have followers who want to follow, and leaders today really recognize that. Uh, if they are not treating people as equals, um, they'll pro they, they probably will lose uh, some of their effectiveness. So leaders need to know that they're not above or better than followers. So you've got to, you've got, we're people helping other people be successful in accomplishing goals. Um, trait theory really is an interesting thing to look at because uh, in the the older days, they really looked at things like height and intelligence, extroversion, uh, fluency, and other other traits. And and today we have leaders of all shapes and sizes and uh, and and different abilities. And so it really is wonderful to recognize how dynamic leadership really is. And and. We really need to, to be able to recognize some of the processes that, that take place. Uh, lots of research has been done on uh, leadership behaviors. And what we know today is leaders can be trained. And uh, we can become more effective leadership when we understand what leaders what leadership, good leadership looks like, what it entails. You know, we, we need to have role models. We need to be able to understand what happens if we don't do things and what happens when we do do things. And so that's really kind of a complex topic. Um, we've studied uh, leaders uh, by title for a long time. You know, in your organization you may have team leaders and plant managers and department heads and directors, you know, vice presidents or presidents, you know. These are titles that are given by uh, the organization itself. The, the leadership is a title. Uh, with emergent leadership, we could all be leaders. You know, we don't have to have a title, but we do need to make sure that as as emergent leaders that we are sharing our thoughts and ideas and 
um, even if we're working with equals in our organization, we still can influence them to do things differently. And that's what a good uh, leader does. Um, we really cannot deny um, power. And Raven and French in the 1950s and in the 60s, they talked about you know, some of the, the main different types of power because they really do, uh, the amount of power that you have influences your capacity to influence other people. And it's, it's our beliefs and attitudes that really affect action. And power is a relational concern for both leaders and followers. And so here are the uh, six different main types of leadership. Referent, that's about relationships. You know, we give respect to our parents, for instance, and they don't have to have uh, that respect and the ability to influence, but we give it to them. Or maybe you're a pastor of a church, or maybe a good friend. That's called referent power. You know, expert power. We gain expert power through studying. You know, I, I know a lot about computers, but when my computer breaks down, I prefer to go to an expert to have them fix it. Or I don't know a lot about fixing cars, and so I hire an expert to do that. Many organizations have hired me to go out as an expert and help them uh, achieve better results with leaders and teams. So uh, we can each become experts through um, our areas of study. A legitimate power is really all about the power that's given to you by the organization. I'm a manager and that gives me power to tell people who work for me what to do. Or I am a, a supervisor, or I am a vice president or president, whatever that title is, that's called legitimate power. You legitimately have the ability to tell other people how to do their jobs and when to do it. Uh, one that we all have is reward power. You know, it, we gain power through giving things to other people, even if it's praise. Uh, coercion is uh, the fastest way to get things done. Do this or else. But it also can be very ineffective in the long time because it really does break down levels of trust. And then finally, the sixth area of power is information power. You know, really having those connections with uh, the right resources and bits of information. So um, we gain power by um, who we know out there that, that, um, that can allow us to, to accomplish organizational goals. So essentially those are the six different bases of power. Uh, personal power is referent power and expert power. Positional power really are related to legitimate reward, coercive and information. Of course there's some crossovers uh, along the way too. So uh, we've seen a lot of changes in the world of leadership and to very often we use the word leadership and management interchangeably and uh, they do go hand in hand but the best way that uh, Dr. John Cotter um, used to explain the differences between management and leadership is managers really are focused on order and consistencies. And I like to call it the things. You know, planning, budgeting, organizing, staffing, controlling, uh, problem solving. Those are all management type activities. Leadership, on the other hand, really produces change and movement. It has a focus on people. So management focus on things, systems. Leadership focus on people. You know, and, and great leaders are really great about having a vision, establishing a direction uh, and aligning people and then motivating and inspiring people to accomplish uh, that, that vision. You know, uh, one theorist from the late 70s uh, suggested that managers have unidirectional authority. They're generally reactive, they prefer work with people solving and have low emotional uh, involvement. Uh, but leaders, on the other hand, take a more personal approach. They're emotional, active, and, and involved. 
Uh, they shape ideas over responding to them. They act to expand available options, and they change the way that people think. So as a leader, we, no matter whether or not we have a title or not, we really need to understand where we've been in the past, what we used to believe, and really understand how leadership has evolved. The more that we understand about what leadership is all about, the more power we have to make a positive difference in an organization and create more job security. It's the leadership that makes the difference. So be a quality leader, help your organization become stronger, or be a manager that doesn't understand how to lead people and make your organization a little bit weaker. All right, I know I've talked to you for more than 15 minutes. I'm looking forward to working for you. I hope you enjoy the course. I'm Dr. Paul Gerhardt. Have a great day, because only you get to choose how you feel about it. Thank you.